In this video, we review Azure DNS private resolvers and inbound endpoints. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Sereltos. In one of my previous videos on Azure DNS, I deployed a Windows DNS server to help resolve host names to private IP addresses for private endpoints in Azure. Microsoft has a better option with Azure DNS private resolvers, and being a PaaS service, there's no OS to manage. Before we begin, please like and subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. That helps get the word out about this channel. Thanks to those who have become members, your support is appreciated. I have a bunch of courses now available at udemy.com. Links are below. And while you're down there, sign up for my newsletter and you'll receive a free guide to getting started with a home lab in Azure. Back to it, let's get started with the basics. What is an Azure DNS private resolver? A private resolver is a service that lets us query Azure private DNS zones from an on-premises environment. And it also allows us to query on-premises DNS from Azure. It's a way of bridging the gap between on-premises and Azure name resolution. The DNS private resolver is analogous to a DNS server. It provides an endpoint clients use to resolve names to IP addresses. Azure private DNS zones are the DNS records used by the private resolver. The DNS private resolver and private DNS zones are two separate entities in Azure. We can have private DNS zones without a private resolver. There's a couple things to know about private resolvers. They're regional and will only work with VNets in the same region. If you have multiple regions, each will need a private resolver. An endpoint requires a dedicated slash 28 or larger subnet. Also avoid using the 10 dot address spaces listed on the screen. These are reserved and shouldn't be used with a private resolver subnet. And another thing, because we're working with private IP addresses between on-prem and Azure, there has to be connectivity between our on-premises location and Azure, a VPN or express route, for example. A private resolver works in two directions using endpoints. An inbound endpoint is used to resolve client requests from on-premises locations for Azure resources. We'll use the example of name resolution for a private endpoint from our on-premises network coming up. There's also an outbound endpoint. This is used to forward requests from our Azure clients to an authoritative DNS server on-premises. This video is on Azure DNS private resolver inbound endpoints, resolving DNS names in Azure from our on-premises servers. Stay tuned for the next video on outbound endpoints, how to resolve our on-prem DNS from Azure. Subscribe and click the bell notification so you'll know when it's ready to watch. Let's get a quick overview of the lab I'm working with on this demo. The lab consists of two VNets. One represents Azure resources, the other represents our on-premises environment. I'm taking a shortcut with this and not incorporating my on-premises lab. We'll pretend the VNet peering is an express route or VPN connection. The principles are the same. The Azure VNet has a default subnet and a smaller slash 28 subnet that'll be dedicated to the inbound endpoint. Slash 28 is the smallest we can use. You can create a larger subnet if needed. There's a server on the on-premises VNet. This has Windows DNS installed and is configured to use itself for DNS lookups. The goal is to access all resources over the private network by their host name. In order for that to work, we need DNS to resolve resource names in Azure from our on-premises DNS. We use an Azure storage account with a private endpoint for this example, but it would be similar for any other type of private Azure DNS zone. We'll add an Azure DNS private resolver with an inbound endpoint in Azure and configure our on-premises DNS to forward request to the resolver. Let's get started. Here we are in the Azure portal. The first step is to create a storage account with a blob private endpoint. I'm going over this quickly. I just want to point out some of the settings along the way. Let's create a resource and go to storage. Select storage account, and we'll create a new account. Make sure your subscription and resource group are selected or create a new resource group. We'll scroll down and give the account a name, CIR test 3344 for this. The name really isn't that important. It just has to be unique. Select the region. This example will use South Central US. We'll leave the performance at standard and local redundant storage. And next we'll go to networking. The goal is to block all public access and only use the private network. Select disable public access and use private access. 
that will block all access to the storage account's public IP address. In order to get access, we'll need a private endpoint. We'll go down to Private Endpoints and add a private endpoint. Our subscription and resource group is already selected as well as the location. Give it a name. I'll call this one CIR Test 3344PEP. And again, the name for this demo is not that important, but in production, you'd want to add some naming standards around what you're calling things. We're using the blob storage resource type for this endpoint. Note, we have to repeat these steps if we're using file, table, web, or other storage resource types. They all require their own private endpoint and will have a different DNS name. Make sure your virtual network and subnet are selected. We're adding this to the Azure virtual network. And if we scroll down, we'll go to private DNS integration. We're leaving it to yes, use private DNS zones, and we'll add it to the private link.blob.core.windows.net for this example. Click OK. And we'll skip ahead to review. Once it's ready, hit Create. This will take a few seconds. I'll pause here until it's done. That finished, let's go to Private DNS Zones and see what was configured. Here is private link.blob.core.windows.net private DNS zone. Let's open that up. Notice we have a hostname record for our storage account as well as the private IP address. Also, let's look at virtual network links. And we have the private DNS zone mapped to the virtual network. Now we have a storage account with a private endpoint, and that private endpoint has a record in the private DNS zone. Now that we have that account, let's review the problem. We'll start by going back to the storage account. Let's go to endpoints under settings. This simply gives us the fully qualified domain names of the different service types. For the blob endpoint, it's the storage account name followed by a dot blob dot core dot windows dot net. Copy that full host name. We'll need it coming up. We don't need the HTTPS. Next, we'll go to the server on the on-prem VNet. This is the server that represents our on-premises environment. From the on-prem server, let's open up the command prompt. Now we'll run NSLOOKUP to resolve that host name we just copied. NSLOOKUP CIR test 3344.blob.core.windows.net. We get a public IP address, not the private IP address. We blocked all public access to the storage account, so this won't work. I want you to notice one other thing. Look at the aliases. Let's run NSLOOKUP again on a storage account that doesn't have a private endpoint. This is another storage account I have in my environment that just doesn't have a private endpoint. Notice something different? The account without a private endpoint doesn't have a private link alias. This is significant in the key to how private endpoint name resolution works. The non-private link address has to always be resolved by the Microsoft controlled DNS server. That way we'll always be able to resolve to the public IP address if the resource doesn't have a private endpoint. We can add the private link zone to our internal DNS servers so we control resolution to the private IPs. We'll only get that private link alias if the resource has a private endpoint attached. Next, we'll use Azure Storage Explorer to try to open up the storage account. Let's open Storage Explorer. We'll try to connect to the storage account with a shared access signature URL that I already created. We'll attach a storage account. We'll use the shared access signature URL. We'll use the account name for the display name, CIR Test 3344. and paste in that shared access signature, and next, and then connect. Let's open up our blob containers, and we get an authentication failure. Notice it indicates a firewall or network issue. That's because the storage account resolves to the public IP, but we have that blocked. Let's fix that next. We can close this, and we'll go back to the Azure portal. From the Azure portal, let's create a DNS private resolver. We'll create a resource and type in DNS. And here's DNS Private Resolver. We'll create. Make sure the subscription of the resource group is set. Under Instant Details, we'll give it a name. Seraltos Test DNS for this example. And select the region. South Central US. 
set it to the same region as the VNet we're attaching it to. And remember, you will need a subnet dedicated to the inbound endpoint. I already have that set up, but that can be created when you create the inbound endpoint as well. Select your virtual network. And as I said, that has to be in the same region as the private resolver. PR VNet 1 is the Azure VNet. Next, go to inbound endpoints. We're going to add an endpoint. And we'll give it a name, CIR private DNS for this example. And select a subnet. You can also create one if you don't have one already. I already have one, so I'll select that. And save. We're skipping outbound endpoints for now. That video is coming, so be sure to like and subscribe. And click the notification button to get a notice when it's ready. Go to Review and Create. And once validation passes, click Create. This too will take a couple minutes to finish. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. That finished, let's go to the resource. Go to Inbound Endpoints. And we can see the endpoint we just created. Make note of the IP address. That's the IP address that will service DNS queries. We'll need that coming up. Let's go back to that server that represents our on-premises environment. Now let's do an NS lookup again for that storage account. It still gives us the public IP address, but watch what happens when we tell NS lookup to use the DNS private resolver inbound endpoint. That's the IP address I just pointed out. Now we get the private IP address. That's because our private resolver is authoritative for privatelink.blob.core.windows.net. We need to configure our on-premises environment to send private link queries to our private resolver. This is a Windows DNS server, and the server is set to use local DNS. It's a close representation of how a lot of on-premises environments are configured. It's using Windows DNS. Only our client and server are on the same machine. We have to configure our on-premises DNS to forward private link DNS requests to our private resolver. We do that with Windows DNS conditional forwarders. Let's create a conditional forwarder for our private endpoint DNS. To do that, we'll open Windows DNS Manager, go to conditional forwarders. A conditional forwarder tells the DNS server that if a request for a specific domain comes in, send it to another DNS server. For this example, any request for privatelink.blob.core.windows.net will be forwarded to our DNS private resolver inbound endpoint. And we'll do that by adding a new conditional forwarder. Add the private link DNS domain. This example is privatelink.blob.core.windows.net. You would have to repeat these steps for other types of private endpoints. And we'll add the private IP address for the private resolver inbound endpoint we just configured. We'll hit enter. You may have the option to store this conditional forwarder in Active Directory. This is a standalone DNS server, not joined to Active Directory, so it's not an option for this example. We'll click OK. Let's go back to the command prompt, and we'll run NSLOOKUP again to our blob storage account using the default DNS server. So we'll remove the inbound endpoint. Now it's just using local DNS, and that works. Now it resolves to the internal IP address. That's because any request for a storage account that has a private endpoint will be forwarded and resolved by the private DNS resolver. And if we do an NS lookup for the other account, the one that doesn't have a private endpoint, that's still resolving to the public IP address. Now that it resolves to the internal IP address, let's check Azure Storage Explorer. From here, we'll refresh. And I know there's not much there, but we do see the logs, which means it's successfully connected. So Azure Storage Explorer is connecting to the blobs container over the private IP address. That's great. We now can resolve private endpoints from our on-premises environment without setting up DNS servers in Azure. I hope that helps you better understand Azure DNS private resolvers. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.